comprised of the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system. And those are the nerves that are coming off of the brain and the spinal cord. This is a picture showing you the brain and the spinal cord coming off of the brain. Um, all of these nerves that branch out from the spinal cord, those are your peripheral nerves. <coughs> central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. They're covered with three membranes called meninges. There's an outer membrane, a middle membrane, and an inner membrane. So the outer one is called the dura mater. The middle one is the arachnoid mater. And the inner one is the pia mater. And in between that middle, the arachnoid or uh, matter and the PM matter is a space called the subarachnoid space, and that is where the uh, cerebral spinal fluid is. It's like bathing the, the uh, brain or spinal cord, surrounding it to kind of protect it. Um, for the brain, there is a a restricted permeability called the blood-brain barrier, and it prohibits most microbes from passing into the uh, central nervous system. Also though, it pro uh, prohibits most drugs from going in if we need to get drugs in there, unless they are uh, lipid soluble. So an example of one uh, antibiotic or chemotherapy that can go through into the brain is chloramphenicol. What's that noise? <laughs> what is it? Watching a movie. So inflammation of the membranes or the uh, meninges is called meningitis. You have inflammation of the brain, that's encephalitis. And if they're both inflamed, then it is called meningoencephalitis. Beginning of your chapter, it's kind of review and it's good. You go in there and check on definitions. So, meningitis can be caused by bacteria, by viruses, fungi, or protozoa. <coughs> Bacterial men meningitis is more severe than viral meningitis. <coughs> Just general symptoms of meningitis are fever. Pounding headache, stiff neck, nausea, vomiting, and even convulsions and death. Diagnosis to see if you have meningitis would be to do, to do a spinal tap or a, a lumbar puncture, what it's called, to check the uh, spinal, cerebral spinal fluid to see if there's any uh, organisms in there. So you could Try to culture what would be in there. You can run a gram stain to see what uh, bacterial might be in there. And you also can check for increased number of white blood cells, <coughs> which we would expect to see if you had a bacterial infection. Treatment, just in general, like you start with a broad spectrum antibiotic. And then once the doctor is able to diagnose what type of uh, organism is causing the meningitis, then you can shift your treatment to uh, be more specific. So free bacteria cause 70 cut 70% uh, of the cases and 70% of the deaths. 
No, we know that. Um, one type of bacteria is Haemophilus influenza type B, and they used to think years ago that it caused influenza and was responsible for uh, some pandemic type influenza that was going around many years ago. But now they know that it isn't one that is responsible for influenza, but the name is still that. So it is an aerobic gram-negative rod, and it's a common microbiota that you would find in your throat. It gets uh, transmitted by close contact and through nose and throat discharges. So some people could be healthy and not have any signs of it, and they can be carriers of this bacteria. So they're considered then the reservoir for the uh, bacteria. pathogenicity, which is the ability of that microbe to cause disease, and by overcoming your um, defenses, is due to its uh, cap, which is a capsular type B antigen. So that's why they call it HIP. It's Haemophilus influenza, and then it's that type B capsule. So it's kind of HIP. Uh, the, they have come up with a vaccine called the HIV vaccine, and that is responsible for the decrease in the cases that we see in that type of meningitis. <coughs> used to be uh, one that caused a lot of meningitis. So, so most cases are in children from uh, six months to four years old. So up until six months, children are protected by their mother's uh, antibiotics. And after that, that, that weakens and wears off, so they're susceptible then to uh, these types of um, diseases. So it tends to occur in sporadic outbreaks in daycare and families, but not, it's not a, an epidemic type uh, meningitis in the general population. <coughs> type of meningitis is caused by meningococcal meningitis. It's the bacteria that causes it. These are all bacteria we're talking about. Uh, oh, the pathogen is Neisseria meningitis. That's the disease of men meningococcal meningitis. Uh, Neisseria is an aerobic gram-negative diplococcus with a capsule. So if it has a capsule, that's part of its virulence, makes it strong, and it needs to uh, cause disease and avoid host defenses. Um, it is the most serious form of acute meningitis, and if, if you don't get treatment, there's an 80% mortality rate, and death can be within hours from the onset of the fever. Again, transmission is through close contact with droplets and secretions from your respiratory tract. Uh, the bacteria can colonize the nose and throat of healthy carriers, and they serve as a reservoir. And they think that about 40% of the population uh, are carriers of this bacteria. Or they can lead to, so you can either be a healthy carrier if you, ha if you have this bacteria, or you, it can lead to a throat infection. And that can lead to bacteremia, meaning that bacteria is going to get into your bloodstream. And then eventually meningitis.
symptoms again of like a flu-like uh, respiratory infection. And then uh, it can spread to the bloodstream. And then the bloodstream takes the bacteria to the meninges. So, and the symptoms, remember this one is a, uh, this one is a gram-negative bacteria. So the symptoms are caused by an endotoxin released into the circulation. And the endotoxin causes the production of cytokines. Those are the chemical messengers and they cause symptoms. And in this case, they damage blood vessels, causing a rash that you see on your skin. And this rash, rash doesn't blanch. That means that if you press it, think of uh, when you have a sunburn and you press on your sunburn with your hand and then let go, it's white when you look at it and then it gets red again. Well, with this uh, rash, you can press on it, but it doesn't blanch or get white. It just stays red. <clears throat> and this rash is on the trunk and appendages many more. Uh, they have a vaccine also for this uh, uh, type of meningitis, but before they had that vaccine, uh, it, the disease was associated with epidemics in schools and uh, the military, wherever people are in close contact with, with one another. Treatment is intravenous antibiotic, and this one is also seen in children, usually under two years of age. Third one is pneumococcal meningitis. The uh, pathogen is Streptococcus pneumoniae, <coughs> gram positive diprotoxy, and it also has a capsule. And this one is alpha hemolytic if you grow it up on blood agar. Remember Streptococcus pyogenes, that one is beta hemolytic, but uh, Streptococcus pneumoniae is. Uh, Alpha hemolytic. Uh, respiratory, it has a <coughs> respiratory portal of entry, and it's also yes. normal microbiota from ear, nose, and throat. It can penetrate the respiratory mucosa and then get into your bloodstream, and then from there it gets into your meninges. And they estimate 70% of the population are healthy carriers of this uh, bacteria. now the leading uh, cause of bacterial meningitis. Since uh, we have the vaccine for the Hib, Hib, uh, the Hib vaccine for Haemophilus influenza. Mortality rate in children is 30% and in elderly patients, 80%. And for children under two, the vaccine is uh, recommended. They can get their vaccine then. And there's a good side effect to the vaccine, and that is there's a de decrease in middle ear infections. However, now we're seeing increasing numbers of antibiotics.